I want to talk to you today about what he was talking about healing homes. Is there healing in your homes? Is there arguments in your home? Are there arguments? Is there contention? Is there this or that? Well, probably yeah to a lot of things. You know, maybe there's confusion in your home. Maybe there's something in your home that you're not even sure how it got there and you maybe need to pray it out. So many times I think when I turn on the television and stuff comes on the TV, I think, you know what? That's just fabulous. I want that atmosphere in my home. Other times it's like, I don't want that atmosphere yeah. in my home. Yeah. and we pray it out. So on your road to a better life, Richard just got done talking about healing in your home. There's a couple of tiny little key points in here that I want to talk about. Now there's lots of key points, but I want to put these in a specific order and you may jump in at any time. Now you're in week one. I am in page 22, week one. Week one, uh -huh. okay. On page 22, week one, you're God's property. So if you make a decision that your home is a healing home, you also have to make a decision that you're God's property. You're not just floating through the stratosphere waiting for, you know, the other shoe to drop. First, I don't know why the other shoe has to drop. I never got that saying. Or trouble comes in threes. Why'd they pick three, not two or seven? I don't want to listen to the world's standards about what has to happen in my home. I want to set the standard for what happens in my home. I make a decision that I am God's property. And I want to tell you to, you can begin by doing that and, and actually setting the atmosphere. Now, if you go to page 33, now I'm jumping around, I'm but I want to show you why. Going You're going to, to set the atmosphere that you belong to God. You're God's property. Then you jump over to 33. Jesus lives in my house as my home. You know, they always say mom set the tone of the home or if well, mama right. ain't happy, nobody's going to be happy or however they say that. Jesus lives in my home, and I want Jesus to set the tone mm -hmm. of my home. And the way that happens, if you look at Tuesday, page 33, if you get your book, Jesus will set the tone of your home by what? Inviting him in. Now, this is still the first week. This is just the first week. I'm telling you, this is a book full of a lot of material, so I believe it will be a blessing to you. Now, now that you've established you belong to God, Jesus is in your home. Now, I want you to go over to page 37. God wants me to prosper that's, and be in health. That's Wednesday. That's Wednesday, 3 John 2. Now, why did I do that? First of all, you need to know that you belong to God. You're in this world, the Bible says, but you're not of it. You are of God, little children, and greater is he that lives in you than he that is in the world. That's right. Establish who you are in Christ. You know, people may say, we, we joke about this all the time. Oh, Richard's oral son or Lindsay's husband or Jordan and Olivia and Chloe's dad. Richard's Richard. And yet he's all of those <laughs> other things too. We have to establish who we are and then establish who God is. I am a child of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the most high God. Therefore, greater is he that lives within me than he that's in the world. Therefore, my home can be a healing home as I invite Jesus into my home. The Bible talks about the son of God, Jesus, who went about doing good, what? Healing all who were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. Mm -hmm. I'd like to invite him in my home. Now, there are some people, I'm going to be frank with you. I don't want to invite into my home. And if they try to come into my home, I might not open the door. There's some people that, you know, will knock on your door and want to sell you things. Sometimes I don't want to buy those things. There's a, a young lady in our neighborhood selling Girl Scout cookies. Open the door and come on in. But other times you might not want to invite certain people or certain things into your home. And that's your determination. That's your decision. That's right. But I also want you to make a determination and make a decision to invite Jesus into your home. This house is a healing home established by the shed blood of Jesus. Through the Bible, I have a Bible right to say, Jesus, come on in. Knock and the door will be open. If Jesus is knocking at your door, maybe consider opening the door. Now, how do you do that? I want you to go to 3 John 2. 3 John 2 says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Now, wish above all things can mean, in a certain way, it can mean God's highest wish. But also, above all things, it also means including all things. I wish above all things is like 
my highest wish for you. But there's a translation of it when you look at it that means including everything that you are about, including all that contains you, all that includes you. Maybe it's your job, maybe it's your family, maybe it's your marriage, maybe it's your children. Maybe it's whatever it is that you don't even know is just falling apart. But God, how do I put the brakes on it? Beloved, I wish above all things, all inclusive that what you may prosper. That word prosper means a successful journey on the road of life. Now, people may have said to you, are you part of that prosperity camp? Well, if you're going to go camping, first of all, let's decide what camp you're going to be part of. The prosperity camp, that means a successful journey on the road of life. Now, what's the flip side of that? Unsuccessful camp? A failure in everything that you do on your journey in life? So when someone flippantly says to you, are you part of that healing camp? What's the opposite? You part of sickness and disease? I mean, when people are trying to, I'm going to say, manipulate your thoughts or my thoughts or somebody else's thoughts by saying something about the, what, what the Bible says or doesn't say, what the Bible is or what the Bible isn't, let's go to the book. And the Bible says in 3 John 2, I wish above all things that you prosper. i tell you a story. Please. I, I relate this in this. Uh, this is Wednesday now of the first week. Mm -hmm. I tell the story in this book of how my parents were pastoring in a small town in Oklahoma and how they discovered 3 John 2. Mm -hmm. My dad was a, a husband, a father, a pastor, and in mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. He was on his way to school uh, to catch the bus, and he forgot to read something in the Bible, which was his custom. He ran back in the house where my mother was, and picked up the Bible and it fell open to 3 John 2. And he read it. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. And he was stunned. He'd never seen it before. And my mother said, as he read it out loud, she said, Oral, is that in the Bible? And my dad said, well, look at it. Here it is. That's how they discovered this, Lindsay. And I think that's, that's one of the reasons why it's so important to me because they really discovered this. This is what God wants for us. It was a, a conversation I had with your dad that really led me to study this scripture based on what you just said. And he was commenting that he was the pastor. He read the Bible. He studied the Bible. And he was in school to learn about the Bible. And lo and behold, he didn't even know that was in the Bible. And when he read it and read it to your mother... Your mother, as uh, she studied the Bible, and your mother said, is that even in yeah, the Bible? Yeah. Here was the comedy of that whole thing. He said it, he had to stay home and chew on it. It wrestled with his spirit so much. Why would you say it was wrestling? Isn't that a great word? Not to oral, and I'll tell you why. He said he wrestled with it because he said, the pastor of the church where I'm at doesn't believe that. And he said, and I'm the pastor. So when you get down to what he was saying, here is a person trying to pastor a church or a person trying to be with his family or a person trying to uh, expand his knowledge of the Bible. And he doesn't even know that God wants you to prosper. So when he found that and he really began to study that in the Bible, then what did he have to do, Richard? You have to make a quality decision. Yeah. Do you want Jesus to live in your home? Or do you want the gospel of the book of opinion, which is nowhere in the 66 books of the Bible? If you want that to be in your home, you can do that. Well, somebody said, who? Who's the somebody? Well, they say, who's they? And then you come up with a somebody and a they, but you don't come up with scripture to back it. This is 3 John 2. This is a scriptural reference that God wants us to prosper, have a successful journey along the road of life, and be in health. You mean God didn't put sickness and disease on you? Okay, so here's a thought on that. <laughs> Why would Jesus come to the earth to be about his father's business and say, I and my father are one? And why would he do that and go ahead and want God to put sickness on you when he and his father are one? And the Bible says he came to eradicate sickness. If that isn't conflicting, if that isn't confusing, if he and the father are one, which one? Who puts on the sickness? Who puts on the, on the healing? You know, good cop, bad cop. Who gets to play good cop and who has to play bad cop? No, I and my father are one. I would say it, my father and I are one. How is that that we can separate God the Father and think God came to beat us up with a whipping stick? God put sickness and disease on me. I made one mistake and God lesson. taught me this horrible lesson when Jesus came as a healer. And he came, he said, if you've seen me, you see the, the Father. Father. It's a direct contradiction of the Word of God. Jesus can only do what he saw his Father do. He said he only came to say what he saw his Father say, and he can only 
follow his instru the instructions his father instructed him when he came to this earth for this purpose. Wow, this one will really stick, I pray. For this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest to destroy the works of of the devil. That's 1 John 1, 9. Beloved, yes it is. Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, have that successful journey along the road of life, be in health. It actually means a constant, continual state of well-being. Not healed today, sick as a dog tomorrow. Then I got healed, then I got sick, then I got healed. Wait, wait, it's Thursday. Do I get sick or do I get healed? No, no. A constant, continuous state of well-being, of healing, of wholeness. And then he said, wow, even as, which is the direct proportional rate, even as your soul prospers. At the same proportional rate that your soul, your mind, will, and emotions are prospering, the others will follow suit. It means he wants you well in every area. Richard, every area. Spiritually, physically, financially, emotionally, your family, your business, your job, your ministry, your marriage, your relationships, every area. I was reading something about mental illness and I, you know me, I'm reading statistics. And so I was reading some of the statistics that were going on um, in the world, in the earth, how things have shifted, how things especially, especially shifted after 2020 and COVID. And mm -hmm. I was interested in the statistical references that they were making. And the article was talking about mental illness. And I was, I was honestly very interested in seeing how things had changed, how people's minds have had a mindset change, how people have been fearful or <clears throat> tormented in their mind or this or that, or even just confused or honestly not clear thinking. And some of it was talking about a fog, even if you don't feel the effects of a, what they called a COVID fog, you know, just confusion and on and on. I was just trying to process that clear as a bell. I heard the Lord say, I'd like you to talk about it. And I, I, here's my thinking. I'm no expert. I have no idea what to talk about. And he said, but I want you to do it biblically. Okay, what are you talking about? He said, I want you to talk about wellness. Mental wellness. He said, I have given you power, love, and a sound mm -hmm. mind. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but God has given us power, love, and a sound mind. I wish above all things that you prosper have a successful journey on mm -hmm. your road to life. Be in health, a constant continual state of wellness, of well-being, even as your mind, your will, your emotions, sound mind, direct will in accordance to the will of God. And not let your emotions run away with you, but have your emotions line up with the word and the will of God so that you do the work of the Father. And as you're doing whatever it is you go about your daily life, your home is a healing home. It's filled with the goodness of God. See the goodness of God, the Bible says, in the land of the living. And know that God wants you to prosper. Know that you can invite Jesus in your home. And know that you can set the tone of your home to be a healing home, especially according to 3 John 2. I like 2. that, the tone of your of home. Of your home like to that. be a healing home. The tone of your home. And that is my prayer for you from the crown of yes. your head to the soles of your feet for the tone of your home to be a healing home. In Jesus' name, amen.